Welcome to the Singapore Botanic Gardens. I'm Steffi and I'm at the Tanglin Gate. Join me on the Heritage Trail to discover the rich history of Singapore's first UNESCO World Heritage Site. Our first stop is Hotham Hall, which houses the Gardens Heritage Museum. Here, you can find out more about the Gardens history through the exhibition and archival collections on display. This building is named after Richard Eric Hotham. He joined the Gardens in 1922 as an assistant director and later became director from 1925 to 1949. He played an influential role in raising interest in horticulture activities in Singapore and Malaya. The upper floor was used as his laboratory where he conducted experiments in orchid breeding and hybridisation. Gazetted in 2008 as a conservation building by the Urban Redevelopment Authority, this is now a heritage museum. The museum contains items such as old photographs, plant specimens, rare botanical books, paintings and many more. Hotham contributed significantly to the garden's orchid hybridization program by perfecting the technique for in vitro seed germination. These experiments resulted in free flowering and hardy orchid hybrids, which eventually led to the growth of the orchid cut flower industry in Singapore. Look at this kapok tree, it's about 40 meters in height. This majestic tree is also known as the silk cotton tree as its ripe fruit pods produces light woolly hair fibres. These fibres were used to stuff pillows and life jackets in the past. Kapok trees can be found throughout the world. They produce small creamy white flowers with a milky fragrance. These flowers are pollinated by bats and the seeds are dispersed by wind. This heritage tree was planted in the 1930s. Did you know that you can recommend a heritage tree through an online nomination form? The Heritage Tree Scheme advocates the conservation of mature trees and promotes appreciation of our natural heritage. Do you find this tree familiar? Well, just take a look at the back of your $5 note. This Tembusu tree is one of our most iconic native trees in Singapore and is believed to be 175 years old. It is most recognisable by its low-hanging horizontal branch. Notice the fences around the tree? It has been blocked off to the public to prevent soil compaction and to ensure its branch doesn't break from the stress of visitors sitting on it. The wood from this tree is strong, durable and resistant to termites. Due to these properties, it was commonly used to make chopping boards, bridges and boats in the past. Over here, we have the tiger orchid, which is the largest orchid species in the world. It can weigh up to 2 tons, which is equivalent to 2,000 kg. This plant here is believed to be the oldest orchid in cultivation and it was planted at this spot about 160 years ago. The 10 cm white flowers are born on an elongated shoot from the base of the stem. Each floral stalk is about 2 meters tall and carries about 40 long-lasting flowers. Over the years, NPARKS has been reintroducing tiger orchids into suitable habitats across Singapore as part of the orchid conservation program. So the next time you're out, keep your eyes peeled for these native treasures. Right behind me, you'll find the saga tree. This is a deciduous tree, which means it sheds its leaves for brief periods for every six to eight months. The flowers bloom throughout the year. They are small and have a faint scent of orange blossom. The seed pods coil up before splitting to release eight to 12 seeds. The seeds are scarlet red and hard. They are normally eaten and dispersed by birds. Do you know that saga seeds were used as beanbag fillings, also known as five stones in the past? See these steps? They were made by Australian prisoners of war during the Japanese occupation from 1942 to 1945. These bricks were made at a brickworks at Changi back then. Do you see these arrows? In the past, arrows were used to symbolise that something was property of the British government. The bricks have not been replaced for historical reasons. Have you seen a termite mound before? Let's take a look. This mound belongs to the termite that cultivates a specific type of fungi. Many view termites as wood-eating pests, but most don't do so. Out of the 95 termite species in Singapore, only 5 species feed on wood. Here we are at Swan Lake, which is named after the mute swans that are found here. The mute swan is one of the heaviest flying birds in the world. Contrary to its name, it has a wide range of vocalisation that includes rumbling and aggressive hissing. Swans need a special diet to stay healthy, so do not feed them human food as that may cause them to fall ill. 
at the gardens, you'll come across many native animals, including the plantain squirrel. They live mainly in trees, in spherical nests made out of twigs. You can identify them by their olive-brown upper body and tail, and their reddish-brown belly. It also has a long bushy tail and black and white stripes along the sides of its body. They feed mainly on seeds, fruits, flowers, and small animals. Don't be alarmed! What you see is not a crocodile but a Malayan water monitor. It is one of the largest lizard species in the world. As the name implies, they tend to stay close to water bodies. They are generally shy, but are sometimes known to whip its tail in defence. The other species of monitor lizards that you may encounter is the clouded monitor. This species has spots all over its body. There's lots to discover here at the Singapore Botanic Gardens. I hope you enjoy exploring with me and hope to see you here soon. Bye! <laughs>